Hello everyone, welcome to the latest Passive Solar Greenhouse video from Mid Wales in the UK. Our Passive Solar Greenhouse started as an experimental project when in 2021 we replaced our 23 year old polytunnel. Our new greenhouse incorporated a back wall on its north side which was buried into the hillside of our steep south facing plot. Last year we published a popular video showing the greenhouse build and the first year of growing and harvesting in the new greenhouse. This video video captures what happened in our second season growing in our greenhouse, which was last year, 2023. It shows what did well, what didn't, and the conditions throughout the year, along with updates on related matters such as irrigation, wildlife, the good and the bad, our monthly harvests and temperature ranges. The season did include some changes in approach, taking on board what we had learned in the first growing season in the greenhouse. First of all, let's look at some of the jobs that we did before the start of the new growing season. Winter is a good time to prune and train the new vine. We chose a self-fertile seedless variety called Flame. Our aim is to get good coverage of the wall using horizontal wire support to tie in the new shoots. This should create a multi-stemmed cordon. To that aim we took the two strongest stems and tied them horizontally along the base of the wall, each side of the main trunk emerging from the soil. New shoots should then grow vertically along the whole length of the wall, fingers crossed. Update later in the video. This is also year two for our new young peach tree, a variety called Rochester, which we are planning to train in a fan formation on the south facing wall. We didn't realise that pruning should only take place during spring and summer to prevent a fungal disease called silverleaf. Now we know, so we'll be adopting a new pruning regime in future. Peaches fruit on the growth made during the previous summer, so we will need to prune carefully to encourage this. The young tree did have a few pretty blossoms, but no peaches this year. Again, we are using horizontal wires tensioned on vine eyes to tie in new shoots. We decided to add a thin mulch of well-rotted manure to all the beds except the one containing our brown turkey fig tree. The fig tree is well established and we don't want to encourage it to outgrow its place. To make life easier for ourselves we lifted the irrigation pipes. This is an easy job as they are just held down by plastic pegs. They were propped well away from the ground before mulching beds with the magic muck. The pipes were then repositioned and the refreshed beds were ready for seed sowing and planting. And so on to our planning for the year. What to plant where? This year we opted for just one bed for cordon tomatoes after the first year's tomato forest. Hopefully there would still be space for a couple of bush tomatoes in the other beds. The additional space freed up would be used to try different leafy crops and also aubergines. At the end of last season we introduced a cheap passion flower from the supermarket to the back corner of the greenhouse behind the fig tree and asparagus. Having established itself it romped away through this season, delighting us with hundreds of gorgeous blooms. Unfortunately, whilst pretty, the fruit are not really exciting to eat, but the flowers are beloved by pollinators. We did a small amount of external work during the year. Late winter, going into early spring, we started building a new dry stone wall at the eastern end of the greenhouse alongside the back door. This was mainly an aesthetic feature to cover up some unsightly plastic and concrete blocks which emerged from the building of the back wall and an incorporated damp proof course at the rear of the greenhouse. The finished wall also helps to throw rain away from the greenhouse here and the foundations probably also encourage rainwater to clear away quickly from the ground during winter storms. Dry stone walling is one of our favourite activities as it happens, so it was a joy to make this little wall. We think the greenhouse looked even more beautiful when it was complete. And then, as winter turned into spring, it was time to get well and truly stuck into the second growing season in our greenhouse. Here briefly is what happened month by month. February. The first seeds sown in the bed were parsley, moss curled and lettuce, winter density. The lowest temperature for the month was 1 degree centigrade and the highest 29 degrees centigrade. March. Early March saw snow in mid Wales, but by mid March it was warm enough to continue sowing seed, both in the house in the propagator and also in the greenhouse, both on the bench into seed modules and also in the beds, including spinach, dwarf French bean, spring onion, and coriander. Radish had self seeded from plants we left to flower last season, so we enjoyed an early crop. Kale had also overwintered 
and amazingly new nasturtium plants had begun growing despite the cold weather outdoors. The small asparagus clump threw up several new shoots, but as it's still early days, we didn't take any crop this year to allow the plant to grow stronger this season. Some self-sown potato plants thrived in the warmth. The lowest temperature for the month was 4 degrees centigrade and the highest 32 degrees centigrade. We harvested radish, kale, parsley and nasturtium leaves. April We continued to sow seed directly into the greenhouse soil, including mustard giant red, pak choy shanghai, further lettuce varieties, basil, sweet and red leaves, landcress and radish. In the sheltered and warm greenhouse soil, seeds soon germinated and young plants began to grow quickly. On the workbench, seed was sown for plants which would eventually be hardened off and planted outdoors, including kale, cabbage, purple sprouting broccoli, leek and annual flowers. From mid-April, we started planting out the first squash plants, which had been brought on in the house and thrived. Some of these grew up trellis frames, which are a permanent feature in one greenhouse bed. Young tomato plants were relocated from house windowsills to the workbench, ready for planting up. We also began hardening off those young plants destined for the great outdoors on our pallet table. Meanwhile, the vine began putting on good new growth, which looked very promising in regard to future training across the back wall. The kale began flowering and looked very pretty amongst the new leaves of the fig tree. The lowest temperature for the month was 6 degrees centigrade and the highest 33 degrees centigrade. We harvested lettuce, radishes, kale, nasturtium leaves and flowers, bay leaves, parsley and giant red mustard leaves. We also enjoyed a small crop of new potatoes from self-seeded potatoes originally left in the soil from the former polytunnel. May Plants really started to race away in the heat of May. As usual, our first job was to plant out the young tomatoes. Some tomato plants had self-seeded from the previous year's crop and already looked enormous compared to the new plants. All the plants were producing fresh green leaves at a great rate, allowing us to start harvesting new crops throughout the month. All except the aubergine plants, which had been brought over from the house. They were so slow growing, they were still too small to plant out and remained on the bench. But all around, lettuces, squashes, courgettes, cucumbers, mustard, landcress, parsley, radishes and even now the French beans were thriving. A new red-leafed kale called KX1 looked very pretty. By the end of the month, courgettes and squashes were starting to fruit. The workbench was crammed full of plants we had grown for our patio pots and these were soon moved to harden off outdoors. May is one of our favourite months in the greenhouse as it is wonderful to see all the fresh new growth and often a perfect temperature for us to work in there and keep an eye on weeds, pests and training of new shoots. Pollinators such as bees frequently pass through. However, by the end of the month it was becoming quite hot by the middle of the day. We left all the windows and doors open for ventilation and even at night windows were ajar by now. The lowest temperature for the month was 8 degrees centigrade and the highest 35 degrees centigrade. We harvested pak choy, lettuce, landcress, spinach, nasturtium flowers and leaves fennel, parsley, mustard, bay leaves and radish. June. As last year, tomatoes, cucumbers, French beans and courgettes went on to a growing frenzy in June, helped by a hot sunny month throughout. For the first time this season, we used our bespoke window extenders, recycled polytunnel hoops, to open the windows as wide as possible. Due to the heat of the midday, we visited early morning and in the evenings to prune and tie in tomatoes and squashes. We tried dwarf French marigolds in the greenhouse for the first time to deter green fly and honeycomb, as it is called, flowered brilliantly throughout the season looking very pretty beside the veggies. The lowest temperature for the month was 10 degrees centigrade and the highest was 35 degrees centigrade. We harvested pak choy, lettuce, kale, land cress, spinach, courgettes, masses of courgettes, nasturtium, fennel, parsley, mustard and radish. July. Both July and August were wet and cool in 2023 in the UK. 
Growth still continued quite rampantly though. Fortunately, our tweaked planting plan paid off and the cordon tomatoes didn't block the path this year. The bush tomatoes had to be pruned regularly to keep them under control though, but we managed to keep the pathway open just about throughout the entire season. Crops were fruiting really well by now and swelling bigger by the day. There had been so many flowers on the nasturtium tripod that we had masses of seeds. The tomatoes were doing well and we knew we'd soon be harvesting those. The aubergine plants had grown more since being planted into a bed, but were still so slow. The cool weather probably didn't help at this stage. We picked a passion flower fruit for a closer look, but it didn't look very appetising. We decided to give it a miss and just enjoy admiring the flowers. By this point, the grapevine had formed an excellent framework on the wall. We had selected the strongest shoots to tie in for this purpose. The lowest temperature for the month was 10 degrees centigrade and the highest was 32 degrees centigrade. We harvested courgettes, basil, lettuce, radicchio, spring onions, French beans, kale, potatoes, first of many cucumbers, parsley and nasturtiums. We tried patty pan squash for the first time this year. The fruits are so cute and also tasty. August Still cool, August was, even so, peak tomato season. We harvested loads of black, red and yellow tomatoes of all shapes and sizes and they were the tastiest tomatoes you can imagine, mouth-wateringly so. We were also treated to the occasional fig at last, though nothing like last year's bumper crops. They were much enjoyed, especially so for being scarce, so sweet and juicy. Another highlight was harvesting our first small bunch of flame-eating grapes, also extremely sweet. We look forward to bigger crops in future years now that the vine is established. Squash also began to crop regularly, including Turk's Turban and Georgia Candy Roaster. The lowest temperature for the month was 10 degrees centigrade and the highest was 34 degrees centigrade. We harvested tomatoes, squash, courgettes, grapes, basil, red and green leaved, French beans, cucumbers, coriander and radicchio. There were so many courgettes, we regularly transformed them into a super tasty soup with red lentils and herbs. September. The weather warmed up again in September for what is often called in the UK an Indian summer. The aubergines had grown much bigger and started to flower well and we were optimistic that perhaps there was still time for fruits to form. Unfortunately, none did. The tomatoes did not disappoint, however, and we were picking them by the bucketful. We lived on yummy fresh tomatoes and even tried homemade tomato soup for weeks. It was wonderful. The tomato and cucumber plants were growing away high into the greenhouse roof by now and pruning was very difficult, so we left them to it. A self-seeded bush tomato had grown all the way up the grapevine and showed no signs of stopping any time soon. We planted some new young lettuce plants which had finally germinated in our shed herbatory, a shed with a sunny growing area. The variety speckled trout is one of our favourites. Outside, the wildflowers had gone to seed, the grass paths were mown and we enjoyed a beautiful warm early autumn. The lowest temperature for the month was 9 degrees centigrade and the highest was 36 degrees centigrade, actually slightly higher than both both July and August. At the beginning of the month, we harvested tomatoes, cucumbers, radicchio, basil, parsley, bay leaves and nasturtium. By the end of the month, we added a giant pumpkin from a rogue seed, butternut squash and lettuce along to these. October. Autumn was definitely on the way by now, though we still enjoyed a few warm days. The greenhouse stayed very cosy for tender plants throughout the month, whilst outside the flowers began to fade and leaves to turn and fall. Leaves on squashes and cucumbers were turning yellow too, then brown and crunchy, though they were still fruiting. Some of the lettuces were starting to bolt, whilst others were fine. A fresh crop of mustard leaves appeared too, whilst the aubergines just flowered. We left some French beans to dry on the plant for seed. The lowest temperature for the month was 7 degrees centigrade and the highest was 33 degrees centigrade. We harvested cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce, mustard leaves, radicchio, basil, parsley, a few figs and nasturtium leaves. November. Much of the month was dull and mild, but the first frosts struck mid-Wales by the end of November. 
Amazingly, November gave us the best fig crop of the year, shared as it was with visiting birds and at least one mouse. The tomato plants still looked green and lush, but around them the fig tree leaves turned yellow and started to drop, whilst other plants were also clearly reaching the end of their season. The courgettes were still trying, but the damp weather caused the fruit to rot off at this stage, and most of the lettuces had bolted by now. The lowest temperature for the month was 0 degrees centigrade, and the highest was 26 degrees centigrade. We mainly harvested figs, tomatoes and herbs, plus a few leaves of Cavallo Nero kale. December. And it turned cold. It was time to clear out the beds and start looking forward to a new season. We were away for a while and then we celebrated Christmas with the final fig harvest of the year. We were pleased to notice that more unrecovered potatoes had burst into life with the promise of a small crop, perhaps in early 2024. The fig tree was pruned, the peach tree and vine revealed their structure once more in the cleared greenhouse. Mustard leaves and parsley continued to crop in a small but rewarding way even now. The lowest temperature for the month was 0 degrees centigrade and the highest was 21 degrees centigrade. All in all, we were pretty impressed with the way things had gone for our second greenhouse season. We enjoyed another abundant harvest and spent many many wonderful hours gardening in this amazing space. In some ways, year two had turned out differently to the first season. Looking back on performance, we focused on some of the challenges from the year. Despite our best attempts, we had no aubergine crop. The healthy plants grew very slowly at the start of the season, but did mature and flower well. However, no fruit resulted. Perhaps we need to hand pollinate the flowers. Further research is called for. Late season lettuce generally bolted quite quickly after being planted out. Radicchio was much more successful and productive. There were far, far fewer figs this season. Perhaps the tree was taking a rest after cropping so heavily the previous year. New growth was covered in young figs, but they sat still during the summer months, only beginning to ripen in the autumn. This was probably not helped by a much cooler and wetter July and August. The greenhouse temperatures were definitely lower than last year in late summer. The peach tree is a teeny bit crowded out in late summer by the enormous tomato plants. We do love our fresh tomatoes, so it's hard to know what to do about this. The peach tree is still growing and needing further training at this stage, but if fruit formed and were shaded out, they probably wouldn't ripen. It is difficult to maintain the balance between perennial and annual plantings, even in a large greenhouse, it seems. Ventilation Ventilation was improved this year as due to planting fewer cordon tomatoes, the front door didn't become blocked with growth, allowing air to move more freely in and out of the greenhouse. The plants were generally lower growing, rather than towering in the first bed on the left upon entering, which also helped. Watering. The irrigation system worked brilliantly again for the second season. It was reinstated at the end of March once the temperatures had started to warm up. You can watch a separate video about our greenhouse irrigation setup, link in the description below. We dismantled the manifold and drained the system once colder weather set in to prevent pipes from freezing. This was on 11th of November in 2023. Wildlife in the greenhouse. Wasps did make a brief appearance in the greenhouse early in the season. They were first spotted on the 20th of April and began a couple of paper nests. However, there was no finished wasp's nest this year. We have no idea why. We were rather disappointed. The enormous nest from the previous year was eventually broken into, perhaps by a mouse looking for a cosy nest. So late in 2023, we removed it completely. This season, wildlife other than wasps was more in evidence, however. Ants appeared briefly in March as we were sowing seed into the beds. Once disturbed, they started to move their precious eggs. However, they didn't become a new and we barely saw them again. Birds were braver this year, coming into the greenhouse to look for bugs and also to feast on ripening figs later in the season. We spotted blackbirds and wrens regularly and robins also popped in occasionally to peck around for tasty morsels found in the soil. Moles made their presence felt towards the end of the season when a couple of large piles of subsoil suddenly appeared on the paths next to the beds. Moles are common on our patch and their tunnelling had been apparent for some time 
on the ground behind the greenhouse. Apart from the mole hills, though, they haven't so far been an annoyance. Generally, we're very fond of moles, so we tolerate them. We are less willing to share our greenhouse with mice, however. Mouse droppings were spotted on the workbench late in the season, and also a small nest was discovered lurking behind an enormous bush tomato plant. The mouse scurried off as the plant was pulled out, hopefully not to be seen again for a while. Nibbled figs were also found on the ground beneath the fig tree. More slugs found their way into the greenhouse this season too. Some smaller ones clearly overwintered in there. We laid our roofing slates on the beds overnight and were able to dispose of sheltering slugs during the day. Overall, they were not a big problem. A lovely frog was once again spotted hibernating under the fig leaves at Christmas time when we did our annual prune of the tree. We left it in peace, hopeful it might tuck into any slugs that crept into the greenhouse in early spring. So with the end of our second season in the new greenhouse, it has been good to reflect on how things have gone and what we can learn for future growing seasons. Overall, we're very pleased with both the harvest and the gardening experience we've enjoyed in our beautiful beautiful hillside greenhouses second growing season thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching and, and happy, happy greenhouse, greenhouse gardening, gardening all, all.